In this video, I'm paying homage to my home state of Mississippi. We're doing a burger that hails from the northeast section of Mississippi called the Slug Burger. Going to get started right after this. I was asked a few years ago to do a slow burger by a guy that lives in Mississippi, a subscriber of mine. He's more central Mississippi. I'm right on the coast and I'm a long way from where the slug burger has its history. And so I didn't know anything about it. I started researching it only to find that it's very loose, very vague and very gray. So I opted not to do it because I didn't know enough about it. I didn't know who was right, who was wrong. A lot of conflicting information if you go looking on the World Wide Web. And so I just kind of left it alone. But more recently, George Motes, he is the renowned hamburger uh, expert, you know, period, hands down. He has spent a big portion of his life researching hamburgers and where they come from. And he's especially into like regional style hamburgers. So he recently did his version or not his version, but the original version of Slug Burger, how it all got started. Now, with that said, today, if you go into Corinth and surrounding areas of North Mississippi, what you're going to be served is actually pork with a soy meal or soy flour filler. As I said, very simple, very easy recipe. I've got two pounds, just slightly over two pounds of ground 80-20 hamburger meat. This comes from the chuck, and into that, I'm putting two cups of day-old bread, stale bread, and all we're going to do is just mix that in. Real reminiscent of what we still do today with meatloaf as a filler. And this is uh, how it all started. Like I said, today it's pork, soy meal, you know, and uh, they've changed it up and that's what it's morphed into. I personally think I would enjoy the beef just like this. At some point, I might try to get my hands on the, the actual meat that they're using today and just do a comparison, you know. There's a store up in that area of uh, Corinth, Mississippi that actually sells the slug burger meat already packaged up. All you do is make your patties and you deep fry it. Those are deep fried. We will be using a griddle today. That's the way George Moat chose to do it. And more than likely, that's exactly how it was done in 1917, more than likely in a cast iron skillet over a wood burning stove. You just gotta remember the times that it was uh, started in and what was available back then little small rural areas of Mississippi. That's exactly where I can sit. Probably a little wood frame shanty of a cafe is what I can imagine. And today they got more of a brick and mortar, but they're still real small establishments, family owned, family run. And I'm sure the recipes change from one place to another. They have a few places up there that sell these. The ones that come to mind with me is the uh, Slug Burger Cafe. They have a drugstore that is also known for them. And they have a place called Bill's Hamburgers. And uh, these are pretty old establishments. It's been a, you know, around a long time, but not as long as what the original Slug Burger has been around. Supposedly 1917 by man, last name was Weeks, is the one that started this. This burger was born out of uh, hard times. You know, the late, or I'm sorry, the early 1900s. That was wartime, that was pre, Great Depression time and everything was scarce and people had to figure ways to make things stretch and extend their supplies. So this is no exception. This is what it was born out of. I did a Oklahoma onion burger here a few years ago and same thing, you know, it was directly uh, affected by the Great Depression, trying to figure ways to extend the meat. So they used onions, piles of onions with a little bit of meat and come out with the onion burger and that is one of my favorite burgers, very tasty. Be right back, we're gonna form this into balls and we're gonna get this party started. So I've got a little melted uh, beef tallow that I started with just to lubricate my, my griddle. 
there's beef fat in this, so it will be rendering its own tallow. And then it's also going to be absorbed by that bread. The bread's going to crisp up. So we're going to place this right here. We're going to add salt. That's all the salt it gets. And we press. You want this super thin, so press really hard. And there we go. I love smash burgers and to think that people have been doing this and knew about this way back then kind of really amazes me because it's such a big deal right now. You know, that's all you see a lot of times on YouTube, smash burger, smash burger, smash burger. Folks, it's been around a long time. It's nothing new. Ooh, look at that. Look at the crust that we've got on that. That's what smashing a burger does. It's got that bread all nice and crispy, which is gonna give it a little different texture from what you're used to on a regular burger. And I, you know, like I said, they've morphed into something totally different now, but I'm really digging this version right here, which is, according to George Motes, is the original way a slug burger was prepared, and I'm all for it. All right, we are ready. Let's do another one. On with our ball of meat. That ball is somewhere between a golf ball and a tennis ball, about right in the middle of that. Add your salt. Now I'm gonna show you another way. If you don't have the little patty wax paper thingies, just put it on that side for about as long as it's been. It's starting to render fat. And just turn it over. You won't need that paper because you have already lubricated the back side of this and it shouldn't stick to this. And there we go. Those little edges get a really nice crisp to them and the texture of these burgers is just killer. Plus it has a great flavor. But um, I'll show you a little later on that this is about as simple as it comes. Only two condiments were originally used as mustard and like a hamburger dill pickle. And uh, nowadays, I think they also put onions on them, which I'm a big fan of onions on a burger anyway. Oh yeah, perfection, man, look at that. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the rest of these out. I'm gonna bring you back here shortly and we're gonna put a burger together and we're gonna give it a try. So hey, it don't get no more simple than this. You want just plain white buns. You don't wanna toast them. They were not toasted. They're just squishy white buns. Onto that, you're going to put mustard. I'm going to put this on top and bottom. If you don't like mustard, you're not going to like this burger. We got some hamburger deals. And if I recall, the magic number is three of them. You take one of the slug burger patties and then you crown it. There it is, just that simple. Time to do a taste test. I personally love little simple burgers like this. Instead of eating one great, big, huge, overfilled burger, I'd rather have two or three of these. Here we go. Mm. So tasty. Kind of reminiscent of growing up, my mother fried hamburgers in a cast iron skillet. Same effect cooked in beef tallow more or less. The texture on this patty, you really can't tell much from a regular burger, but it is a little bit better texture. It's got a little bit of crunch in there from the bread. Hey, slug burger, try it. Till next time, smoky ribs. I just about forgot to tell you how the slug burger got its name. Back in the, those days, a nickel, let's see. Huh? What? Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, really important, how did the slug burger get his name? Well, back in those days, a nickel, five cents, a nickel, plug nickel, was referred to as a slug by many people. So these burgers cost five cents back in those days, one nickel or one slug.